Hi, when I'm working on stuff on the bench here, I've got no shortage of options for magnification. I've got my uh, Tigano microscope, of course, this is what I do video uh, capture on. It's got 30 centimeters working distance here and it's a digital zoom. It can go from a uh, field of view of like almost a full uh, board. There's a bit of distortion at that uh, field of view, but it can go right down to like, I think seven uh, millimeters uh, field of view or something like that so like 40 times magnification uh, optical magnification basically very impressive or if I want to uh, get you know like a really good 3d view of something while I'm soldering it nothing beats a uh, mantis stereoscopic microscope like this of course you can get the usual stereoscopic ones like this but the mantis is easier to use and uh, you can move your head side to side and actually get a sort of you know look around the components a little bit absolutely fantastic these are you know pretty top end bits of kit but sometimes I just want you know I've got something in front of me and I don't want to have to put it under either of the microscopes because first of all they've got to be uh, the thing I'm looking at it's got to be flat like this otherwise you know well you can tilt it a little bit especially if you want to look under and around components and uh, stuff like that but you know this has got like a really short uh, field of view I've got a times four and a times eight lens on here I have got a times uh, ten as well and I've also got um, if I want to do like really um, high-end magnification. I've also got an Olympus uh, stereo uh, microscope as well. Olympus uh, stereo microscope here as well. I can hook the camera up uh, to that as well. So no shortage of options, but sometimes I just want to look at something quick. I don't want to have to turn these on or I've got something weird that doesn't really fit uh, like horizontally under these things or something like that. Or I want to do it somewhere else in the lab um, and not just on my main like soldering and inspection bench here. So I've got uh, things like a little times 10 macro lens. This is similar to the one I use on my camera. In fact, I can use the one on my camera. It's an Optecker. Um, this one's just a no-namer. Yeah, this is just like a no-namer. Anyway, times 10. Uh, macro lens and it's good just for little spot things but obviously it doesn't have a very big field of view so what I miss is the old-fashioned Maggie lamp uh, which is a trademark uh, name but it's like you know the Xerox of you know, you know, they just call them Maggie lamps um, or Luxo lamps or whatever which are these gigantic things and I actually forgot I had this thing um, the the arm for this thing is long since gone um, as are the uh, covers for the lights in here um, but yeah this is I can't remember I think it's a brand name I, I don't know if it's a Luxo or a genuine Maggie I don't think so it doesn't have any branding on it but I thought it was a decent brand so I was going to look into getting options for another big lamp that I can just swing in and just use like it, this has only got doesn't have huge magnification I think this is only a three diopter um, lens and it, it's not great but it has a large field of view and I can just uh, take this anywhere and I forgot that I actually had this but unfortunately when you put this down like this you block a lot of light hence why these things have uh, the built-in lights like this so I thought you know I'd love to keep it standalone so I could just take it anywhere and battery power this thing so I thought I'd hack this and um, like install some proper lead lights a battery uh, solution possibly to uh, reuse batteries that I use in other um, you know lights like um, these ones and stuff like that that I've got and uh, cameras that I've got around uh, the lab I use Sony batteries for basically everything I've got all Sony cameras all Sony batteries so I thought maybe you know if I could like modify it with like a slip in battery or something like that this would be a nice little thing that I can just, um, this thing's heavy, by the way, it weighs a fair bit, um, but, you know, it's a little bit awkward to use, but if you just want to, like, you know, just inspect a board anywhere in the lab, something like this, that you can just switch on and light up, that'd be real handy, so I'm going to see if I can hack this thing, let's go. Right, so let's actually take this thing apart and see what we've got uh, to deal with in terms of like space uh, for batteries and uh, replacement LED lights and stuff like that. It used to have like a hood thing and I do recall there being like an extra little magnification or was that or is this and this could have been the extra magnification lens which came over the top and changed it to like five from three to five diopter uh, magnification or something like that anyway don't actually recall um the cable's been chopped off all right there we go we're in um so we've got like space in here and stuff like that to put things and it looks like uh yeah it's just mains directly Onto, oh, they just come out. Okay, they just fit into little slots there. 
rip out all that. So it looks like we do have some space, of course. I want to put the uh, leads here, either side, of course. So it will keep the uh, reflective uh, back in like this, and that might act as a little heatsink too. Not that you're going to need it. We're going to operate this at such uh, low values. It doesn't really matter. So we've got space in here, but of course, uh, this is a mounting point. This this, this, and this are mounting points. The rest of these, I don't know what these are used for, but they could be all dremeled out. So all that space in there is usable as well. I'll probably leave um, all of this just in case, you know, I want to mount it on an arm or something like that. I'll just leave all that uh, in place and I'll leave the uh, switch in place because that's just uh, convenient. Now for the lead strips here, um, I'm going to reuse these because I've still got a few of these from my uh, studio lights that I took apart. I reused these. I'll link it up here and down below if you haven't seen it. My do-it-yourself light box. And these are fantastic. These are actually high CRI, high color rendering index uh, LEDs. And um, they're matched uh, 5,000 uh, Kelvin for all my other studio lights here. So these are really high quality uh, LEDs. Um, so I'll link in the uh, website where you can get these uh, from. Is These are UG uh, LEDs, I think they are. And uh, yeah, so I can just look. <laughs> The, there you go, right? Um, I don't want to like chop an extra one off just to fit it in there, so I'll leave that flapping around in the breeze, but I can just whack that down uh, with some, um, you know, I could use thermal adhesive as just regular adhesive, because as I said, these are aluminium backed. It's going to be good enough. We're not, I don't think we're going to be operating these at their max uh, brightness. I can't remember what that is anyway, but, and I'll only need like a single strip each side. I don't, like I could fit like two strips either side, but I, I don't think there's <laughs> that much need for that much light. Um, I don't think it's really going to matter. But anyway, I might put them off to the side. If I do need more light, I can sort of like add the extra one there. But so what we need to do now is uh, actually measure. I can't remember the voltage drop uh, across these. So I have to measure that and that will determine our uh, battery solution that we can um, that we can fit in here. Or that, you know, we could put anything on here. I could power it from a single double A if you want to, you know, put a uh, step up converter in there and uh, drive for the uh, LEDs and stuff. Right. So there it is. I got 100 milliamps uh, constant current uh, drive and we're getting uh, 5.3 volts there. So yeah, it's not going to work, uh, work off like a single uh, lithium ion um, or lithium polymer uh, cell. So a dual cell like I've been using here, by the way, I couldn't rejuvenate these. Um, I was shooting a video trying to rejuvenate uh, these batteries from a uh, previous video, but couldn't do it after like a week worth of uh, putting constant voltage on here. Anyway, that's just an aside, um, so you probably won't ever see that video because it just didn't work. I run my do-it-yourself uh, light box at 500 uh, milliamps, so, you know, we could just increase that. 500 amps, no, 500 milliamps, there you go. 500 milliamps, it goes up to six volts there, voltage drop. And unfortunately, if we just limit it to five volts, like um, if we wanted to power it from like a USB, um, you know, pack or something like that, yeah, they do come on, but, yeah, nah, unfortunately. Um, so we could change the string uh, configuration because I think they're, they're, what is it, two in series? Yeah, like we could take out every second one or something like that and replace it with a shorter jumper link. But I, if you wanted to power it from a 5 volt battery, if you had to, then that's okay. Then you can just run to the higher current because you've got half the output because you've got half the number of LEDs. But by the way, if you want to see the glass element in here, there it is. It is chunky. This whole thing weighs 1.4 kilos, by the way. But there it is. It does appear to be symmetrical. So you can see the magnification there. It's it's not a lot. The magnification doesn't look terrific on camera, but trust me, in real life, that's, you know, it's pretty good. It's good for like just uh, stuff like PCB inspection and, and things like that. So anyway, that can go in um, either way. That's symmetrical, but it's just a big lens like that and you've got the big nice wide surface area so that just like holds itself in place with the uh, plastic anyway battery options are we've got available like i said like you know if you want to use like a usb um, pack like this uh, for example we could possibly make a smaller one fit or something like that but five volts uh, us five volts out isn't going to do the business so there's just no point uh, thinking about that so what i was thinking about is because i use 
Um, Sony batteries for everything, like I use them for my studio lights and next to me I use them for the smaller uh, lights I've got. I use them for my um, my photography uh, camera, um, uses uh, these ones as well. So I've got the um, FW50s um, here and uh, yeah, these are the uh, smaller ones. So these are uh, 7.2 volt. Okay, and so I could just um, don't even need like a constant current drive for these things because I don't need like absolutely no consistent output from this. So I could just put a dropper resistor in uh, series, just calculate that for whatever uh, current I needed. And you don't care about like uh, like low battery cutoff and protection and stuff like that. I don't want to do anything fancy or custom. I just want to hack um, something. And these ones here are uh, 7.2 volts uh, as well, but a higher capacity. They are uh, 2600 milliamp hours. Uh, these ones are only. 1300 uh, milliamp hours, but uh, yeah, so I use these for all my lights and I use these for my cameras So if I could just you know like have these and like just sort of like plug them in or something like that Then I can you know that'd be just that'd be just really nice to be able to just like plug in a battery like Dremel out like a hole or something put the PCB in there and then just uh, put that through that'd be really cool now of course you know could do a custom solution using you know um, some pouch uh, cells lithium polymer pouch cells this one's too big obviously but I've got you know smaller ones going down and a thousand milliamp hour is uh, plenty like if I'm doing inspections with something like this I'm not even going to be doing like it's not I'm not going to be spending hours under this thing. I'm only spending like minutes, maybe tens of minutes uh, tops. So even if you run these at uh, 500 uh, milliamps, like constant current, which is what, that's really bright, like I use in my do-it-yourself uh, light box uh, using these strips, then, you know, you're still going to get like a couple of hours use out of it. So really, you know, something, even a small little uh, 1,000 milliamp capacity cell or a 1,300 milliamp one like this, is, uh, is going to do the business. Now, the problem is, these have got these stupid little pin interfaces, and these ones here are better because they've got like these larger uh, pins on here, which you might think at first glance, aha, they're a standard two millimeter uh, banana sockets, but no, nah, they're not. Loosey goosey. <laughs> so, oh, unbelievable. Why? Why did they design these uh, with like a custom uh, pin diameter? Unbelievable. Anyway, so I do have a bunch of chargers uh, lying around, like older uh, style ones, and I don't use these. I've got like better ones uh, now to charge these up. And of course, uh, these two here are for the uh, smaller type. So yeah, this is a dual one, and obviously like these don't fit, but maybe I could, you know, because uh, these have the pin interface I need in there. So the good thing about this one is that slots in like that okay and it's it's not going to fall out it actually the actual uh, plastic in there um, inserts actually holds it in quite well so if I open that up and uh, look at the PCB and maybe like I could but it's got to go vertical like that right so I've got to like hack it in some way like that I don't really want to go in like that because that, well I could that'd be coming out the top then I'd have to cut a hole in the top and that would have to sit in there and the board's probably bigger than that but we can have a look um, but this one here unfortunately is pretty crap um, it, you might, it doesn't slide in but I could actually um, cut out I could dremel out those, that um, plastic stopper at the bottom and then I could slide it in so I could have it in there like that if I take the board out and then just like slide it in but unfortunately um, this is really, uh, like, this is not feel of vision but there's not much force on that. It just, it just falls out. So I don't think that's a very good solution. I actually prefer the bigger one like this because um, weight's not really an issue. As I said, it already weighs 1.4 kilos. That almost slots perfectly in there, actually. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's, a, that's begging for it. <laughs> Almost, isn't it? But then again, I've got to have the lead strip in there. So, oh, oh. So, but, you know, it can do here. I could dremel out something here, perhaps, and slide that in. Now, the good thing about this is that this is a cheap-ass charger I've got. These are nice little pogo pins in there. And when you shove this in like this, not only does it go in like that, but there's a, oh, there's a little bumpy bit there, but, you know, you push that in. And that's pretty solid, right? That doesn't come out. That makes good contact. I really like that. Whoa, you know, let's open this up and have a look. Unfortunately, this one seems to be uh, ultrasonically welded, so I can't, I might have to dremel that apart. This one had screws on the bottom. So, yeah, you know, look, uh, 
There you go, that plugs into there. So, could potentially shave off that if you wanted to, right? Just Dremel out that part of the board, because that's not that contact part, because that's not used. I mean, if I've got it like that, then there's nothing wrong with, like, plugging a battery in, in the top like that. I can dremel these bloody things off, I don't need these. That's alright, it doesn't protrude that much, it wouldn't be too annoying, it'd go in, so it'd stick out a little bit, but it wouldn't be that bad. That's doable, I know it's a bit ugly, it's not as nice as, like, sticking it in the side or having, like, an internal battery solution. Like, an internal battery solution to me just kind of sucks. I don't want yet another thing that'll eventually fail because I forgot to charge it or some other crap. You know, it's nice if I, like, I use these batteries all the time externally. So it'd be nice if I could just, like, have yet another thing that I power uh, with these, these same batteries that I've standardized on. Like that, you know, the good thing about this one is that that's like a really nice small form factor and you could sort of like hack that somehow. You've just got to hack the plastic in, you know, you don't want to rip these out of this and then just do some custom plastics there. Was we'll it? oh, 3D printer custom plastic solution insert. Like, oh, come on, no. God, no. Now, of course, you don't have to use the board. It's only if you wanted to, like, put this in uh, somewhere and, like, be able to, like, recharge it uh, in situ. But if you had the bat, if you do that, then, well, you're just, like, there's no point having this um, external, like, to be able to plug it in. So, yeah, the whole idea of plugging it in is that you charge it elsewhere and, and you're just good to go. If you need it in emergency, I've always got these already charged up. They're sitting on my shelf and I just whack one in or, you know, slide it in or whatever and Bob's your uncle, right? I just, I can just use this anytime, even if I've forgotten about it and it's just, you know, it's run flat or whatever. So that's what I want. So you don't really need the board. All I need is the plastic interface I still don't like still don't like this it's just oh it's so so dicky so yeah I'm erring towards dremeling out that and having the battery just go in the top and that other one is a bit dicky I I actually do like this plastic one that it sort of like snaps in place and it it really holds it in quite well so if I ditch that board um, it, like completely and just, just have the contacts, like I just, just dremel straight across it or whatever, make it uh, fit and keep as much of the plastic um, as possible, then I could just like push that in like that. So what we're looking at here is, yeah, yeah, there. See, could sit, could sit in that part there. I think that's probably the best solution given what I've got. I just realized that they screwed into the bottom, so take out those. So all I've got to do is dremel a thing in the top there um, to insert the battery in, and I, I reckon Bob's your uncle. All right, I'm getting a bit medieval on its ass now. Um, I'm just cutting the board uh, away, and we're going to cut it down here. I'm not going to dremel it, because uh, then you'll just get fiberglass dust everywhere, so... Yeah, better to cut this thing. So, because I only want access to the two terminals there. And I do want to keep the solder joints. I tried to, like, desolder it, but then uh, the pins, they, they'll probably just fall out. So I want to keep the PCB uh, in place, I think. I'll just cut it. Yes, I am wearing a uh, N95 mask. This is kind of fun, actually. Uh, just <laughs> slicing through the... Ripping through the components like this. Ooh, don't want to get too close. Got to be careful. But, yeah... You can do it. You can actually chop a board. Like you could use like a little saw or something like that as well. But once again, the dust this is working really well. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. I think I just yeah. I think I just cracked it. Ooh, got to be careful. This is where it could, uh, yeah, it could bend the pins or something like that. Okay, I think I've cracked it. So all I got to do is cut through the plastic now. Will this just come apart? Oh, look at that. You know, like a biscuit. Um, it just, it comes apart. I've actually got two separate halves of that now. Uh, complete with capacity, bonus cap. Bonus smoothing cap there. No wackers. They can pull out on their own. So yeah, I think I'm gonna have to gunk up a bunch of epoxy under there just to make sure that the pins never come out. Hey, check it out. Not bad, huh? Look at that. Just epoxy all that in there. Just gunk it all in and uh, then have a cut out on the top 
then I can, of course, have the uh, wires. I've got to put the wires on first because they've got to attach to the uh, bottom. And wiggle, 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 yeah. And posts are gonski. And this is where I've got to eyeball it a bit, but uh, she'll be right. I think I've over I accidentally overshot already. It's easy to uh, make the thing move. Yeah, but she'll be right. Hope that's going to be close enough. Got to tidy it up a bit. Got to say, that's eyeballed pretty well. I haven't put it together yet. All right, I've epoxied in uh, this. I've wired, uh, hooked up uh, some wires to the terminals, made sure they weren't shorted, of course. Um, uh, dremeled out a matching and you, you cut it extra, cut it out with a knife as well. Uh, a little port on top uh, for the battery. It should line up. Um, and then I've kept the original uh, switch here and I've simply taken uh, the positive and negative. There's no protection there's no adjustability there's no nothing this is just a quick and dirty hack um, so I use the existing switch and then that just uh, drives um, then two separate uh, drives uh, via two dropper resistors uh, here so what value dropper resistor do we need well at a, a nominal 7.2 volt uh, battery voltage it could be you know 7 to 8 volts or something like that but you know normally uh, 7.2 let's run with that uh, I measured the lead drop um, at uh, I decided maybe 250 milliamps half the brightness of my do-it-yourself photography box so yeah that should probably work um you know i can adjust it later but it's like i just want some light so what voltage are we going to have across our dropper series dropper resistor well it's the battery voltage 7.2 minus the uh, lead string voltage 5.6 so 1.6 volts uh drop we can work out what series dropper at 250 milliamps so ohms law 1.6 volts divided by 250 milliamps 6.4 ohms i've chosen a 6.8 ohm resistor it's the nearest e12 uh, value but what wattage uh, do we need well i squared r 250 milliamps squared uh, times 6.4 uh, ohms a uh, quarter watt i've used a couple of watt resistor in there like three watt resistor so yep she'll be right no worries so i'm going to uh, carefully put this together i could do my uh, cable routing a bit better and stuff like that oh and i've um glued down the two strips i decided to put them on the outside so that like there's a greater light um, angle so we'll see how that goes look I just don't know I probably should have like trialed this before I put uh, some more effort into it in terms of uh, brightness and stuff like that unfortunately I have lost the covers so I could like like cut out a piece of um, diffuser uh, material or something like that but yeah we'll see how it goes so okay I'll just make sure my terminals aren't shorted because that could ruin your day and there you go we've got 6.9 ohms 6.9 ohms, no wackers, and our ground comes through, no problem whatsoever. So, that should be good to go. All right, let's assemble. Could have done my cable management a bit better, but this is just a quick hack. We just want to, oh, lens, lens, that helps. Okay, there we go. Give that a rubber dub later. Just want to try it now, so let's flip it over. And before I put the screws in, I'll just test that she lights up, shall we? So, I'm going to put my battery in. Will that, it fits. Is it going to clip? Yay! Oh, there we go. Ta-da! There you go. It lights. It works. Oh, what a Bobby Dazzler. In fact, I'll turn my studio lights off so you can get an idea of... This is what I wanted. The pattern converges when you're at operational distance like that. There is a bit of a a crossover sh like pattern effect on there but I think that's that could be pretty good um yeah nice look at that like I bought one okay that is now fully together and that actually feels pretty good to hold like I said it is actually quite heavy like 1.4 kilos a little bit more now with the uh battery but um oh well no we took out the uh, fluoro tubes and the metal holding that um it's but look i can make that come on um yeah i could probably use one of the existing holes for like a uh, low battery um indicator like battery good low battery uh something like that but for a simple hack like this um the the patterns seem to be overlapping fairly decently i mean to my eye I can't really see any hot spots in the pattern. 
well, actually I can see a, an overexposed hotspot on the camera, but that's not actually, um, that's just the reflection off the, uh, off the mat, but that's pretty good. Right, let's uh, put a PCB under there. Now this is what I actually want it for, and <laughs> this handle's convenient too, I can just pick it up like that. Um, this is, oh jeez, oh that's nice. Um, <laughs> you're, you're not seeing this, but uh, yeah, this is what I want, right? Just something that I can give me a nice wide feel, a nice wide field view of a board like this, and, and to do it anywhere in the lab. Like I don't have to take it over to my inspection bench to actually do it and you can do things up, you know, anything that's vertically you need to like see inside or something like that. Yeah, this is great. Like it's not high magnification. Okay, this is what it looks like. Okay, so there's the board and we bring our magnification up. As you can see, it's not a huge magnification. Um, it, I think it looks better in real life than it's looking in on my camcorder screen, but that's what's good about these things, the light is perfect. The light is, wow, great. Yeah, I don't think I'll need any more than that. That's, that's pretty good. So I'm very impressed by the light pattern of it. And it, it gets a bit distorted, you know, if you bring it too far back. But of course, you know, your lens can only do so much. But uh, all you want is like a couple of times magnification. As I said, this is like a three diopter jobby, I think. Um, and yeah. It just, it works really well. So we take that away, there you go. Boom. Wow. That's a winner winner chicken dinner. I'm pretty impressed with that hack. That didn't take me long at all. That's great. So yeah, um, if you like that, please give it a big thumbs up. And yeah, I might um, add, I could put like a little indicator jobby on there. I could maybe hack an old microcurrent board, which has a uh, battery threshold, like a low battery threshold thing, so I can have good lead and, you know, low battery uh, warning and stuff like that. But yeah, the good thing is, is I can just use my existing batteries and that just snaps in there brilliantly. I can feel that snap right in place. That is absolutely perfect. And it doesn't obstruct my uh, field of view um, at all. And it uses my existing batteries. Ah. Oh. That's a, that, I, yeah, that is great. <laughs> That's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Catch you next time.